Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. God zei, ik heb je appointed. Ik heb je you. Ik heb je geplanteerd. Dat je gaat gaan en fruit. Living a highly productive life in a busy world. So, that's what we're doing this weekend. First of all, let me say that there is no scripture in the Bible where God commands us or ever even suggests to us that we be busy. <laughs> Doesn't say be busy, but it talks a lot about being fruitful. Bearing good fruit. And so I want to talk to you this weekend about bearing good fruit. We'll talk about it in two different ways. One is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, all those beautiful things that should be coming out of us that lets people know we're the real deal, that we've got more than a bumper sticker, <laughs> that we've actually got a little fruit going on here. And uh, the second thing, gosh, this is so important. Bearing the fruit of getting out in your part of the world and really being good to people. Helping people. Helping people that don't deserve help. Helping people that are needy. Helping the poor. Getting involved in, in making somebody else's life better other than just spending all your time trying to make yourself happy. Self is still the biggest problem that we have. I just read a chapter in a book on it last week, and I'm going to read it again. I tell you, I need it. We can get so absorbed in ourself that we begin to think that even God survives for us and to make us happy and to give us what we want, where it really is just the opposite. Although God does want to bless us and give us things, we're really here to serve him. I think we forget that sometimes. We're really here every day to, to serve God. Every day we should say, when we pray, God, is there something you want to do through me today? Show me somebody that I can help. I've got a plan for the day, but if you need to interrupt me, you're welcome to interrupt me. God rarely interrupts people at a convenient time. If you look at some of the Bible stories that we read, it's pretty amazing. Almost everybody that God called to do something great was busy doing something else when God called them. Abraham, named Abram then, was just comfortable living his life, got a wife, got some kids, got a family, hanging out in his tent. And God says, time to pack up and go to, I'll show you once you start walking. How would you like that? Leave your family and everything you know and pack up and I'll show you where when you get moving. Noah, I don't imagine that he was expecting to be told to build an ark to prepare for a flood when nobody even knew what rain was. <laughs> Peter and James, they were fishing. Jesus said, follow me. They walked off from everything and followed him. I think a lot of us wear a little invisible sign on our body that says, do not disturb. <laughs> Those are the signs you hang on your hotel door when you don't want the, the maid to wake you up when you're taking a nap in the afternoon. It's not what we need to be saying to God. I've got my plan. Don't bother me. We're here for him. He's not just here for us. Come on. For some reason, when I was flying in here today, that just came to me so strong. How we just are always, God, I need you to do this, and God, I need you to do that, and I need you to fix this, and I get this problem, and, and I, give me favor, and I need a blessing, and I need more money, and give me, give me, and help me, help me, and fix, fix. And God, we can take any prayer request to God. He loves to help us. He wants us to ask. There's nothing wrong with asking God for things, but my goodness, if that's all we ever do, then we're missing the point. 
And so I really want to encourage you to start asking God every day, show me what I can do for you today. Put somebody in my path that I can help today. If you'll start praying that, God will start surprising you with some things. May not always be convenient, but I'll tell you what I've learned after my several years of living. That is, is that you cannot be selfish and be happy at the same time. Just doesn't work. So, we don't want to just be busy. We want to bear good fruit. Matthew 12, 33 says you'll know them by their fruit. How is, how is the world supposed to know that Christ is living in us? Just because we put a bumper sticker on our car with a fish on it or because they see us pull out of our driveway every Sunday morning and stay gone for an hour or two or, or we wear a cross around our neck or, you know. How are they supposed to know? You'll know them by their fruit. To tell you the truth, if we would act better, we wouldn't even have to really preach all that much. <laughs> People could see Jesus. We, we hear a lot about witnessing and telling people about Christ, and I believe in that, but I think a lot of times you gotta show people something before they're gonna listen to anything that you have to say. Now, fruit is seen in our behavior, in our words, and what we do to help other people. So, one of the questions that I would like you to answer for yourself this weekend, have a little meeting with yourself sometime after the evening's over, just ask yourself and be real honest, who am I helping in my life? Whose life am I making a difference in? And yes, you may be raising children and so you're helping to raise them and that's extremely important. We need to know that we're helping other people. Who am I helping? What am I doing to make anybody else's life better? Anytime you help people, it's gonna require, it's gonna cost you something. It'll cost you time. It'll cost you money, or it will cost you effort. And one of the reasons why we don't do more for people is because we don't want to give our stuff away. We want to keep it. And some people are more selfish with their time even than with their money. Matthew 21, 18 and 19, I love these scriptures. I wouldn't want to take on a doctrinal battle over what I get out of this, but it makes a good point. It says in verse 18, now early in the morning as Jesus was coming back to the city, he was hungry. Well, there's a lot of people in the world that are hungry. And I'm not talking about physical food. They're, they're hungry for something. They don't even know what it is. The world is not satisfying them. Life is not satisfying them. They're not, they can't get content. They don't even know what it is they want, but they're hungry. They need something. They don't even know what they need. And so seeing, in, seeing a lone fig tree by the roadside, he went to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Now, don't forget that part. He found nothing on it but leaves. And he said to it, never again will fruit come from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Now, I used to read that and I actually kind of felt sorry for the fig tree. I thought, <laughs> I mean, it just, it just almost seemed like a mean thing to do. Well, you know, why did you curse the fig tree just because it didn't have what you wanted? It seemed out of character for the Jesus that I know until I found out something about fig trees. This used to be in the um, original classic Amplified Bible. Now they've redone it, and this is not one of the footnotes now, but it actually said in the footnote that with fig trees, 
when they have leaves on them, they're supposed to always have fruit under that leaf. That's just the way they are. They, they, in, in the fruit bearing season, they have fruit and in a, a leaf over the fruit. So he was hungry. He saw the leaf going to it, expecting to have his need met. Well, I think that a lot of times, all we have is leaves and no fruit. So we have messages on our cars saying, I'm a Christian. Uh, we go to church. We play our Christian music. We have our Christian jewelry. We have our Christian language. <laughs> Come on, you know. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. And I think that Jesus cursed the fig tree because it was a phony. <laughs> it was pretending to have something that it didn't have. And I'll tell you what, I don't want to be a fig tree that only has leaves and no fruit. Come on. To Adam, God said, be fruitful and multiply. To Noah, God said, be fruitful and multiply. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, my father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit, you prove yourselves to be my true disciples. So we're not proving anything by what we say. It's the fruit of our life that proves who we really are. And one of the things that is supposed to happen as we mature spiritually, and we do grow spiritually, just like babies grow from babyhood to adulthood, we grow spiritually. And it takes time, and it takes effort, and it takes work, and it takes study, and it takes doing things just like what you're doing tonight, taking a Friday night, going to hear somebody teach the word, worshiping together with a group of people, this is much better than some of the things you used to do, and I can guarantee you that tomorrow morning you'll feel better than you used to feel when you did those other things. Amen? I always tell people, if you just came and sat in a, in a room full of believers, and you didn't get one thing out of anything, you just sat here, something good would still be happening to you just by being in the atmosphere and being around other, other believers. You know, you know what it's like when you get somewhere where the atmosphere is just bad? I mean, just bad. It's full of strife and everything negative. And, you know, you just, well, we got a good atmosphere going on here. You're, you're, there's somebody on either side of you, in front of you, and behind you that's anointed. Amen? They've got God living in them. That's a good place to be. And so, I think one of the things that we need as we grow is stability. We need, we need to grow to the point where we can behave the same no matter what's going on in our lives. So that's going to be a goal for me to be the same, the Christian in the neighborhood. <laughs> when I'm having a hard time, when I don't feel good, when I lost my job, when I'm sick, you know, it's not right to come home grouchy well, what's wrong with you? Well, I've just, I've just been busy all day. And the traffic was bad. I've got a headache. Yeah. Well, can I tell you something? Everybody's got something. Everybody's got something. And Christians sometimes can be some of the meanest people that you have ever seen in your whole life. And that's terrible. It's at, nothing is worse than a mean Christian. Amen? And so that fruit that we're supposed to have coming off of our life is patience. 
I'm not fully mature yet because I'm still working on that. <laughs> Joy, peace, loving people, forgiving, being quick to forgive, good fruit. And the more that good fruit that you have coming out of you, the happier you are. Because I'll tell you the truth, when we let our emotions rule and we act bad, we, we behave bad, no matter how many excuses we give for it, we, it makes us feel bad inside. No matter what we blame it on, we know it's not right and it makes us feel bad on the inside. So I'm telling you the truth, and I may say this a hundred times this weekend so you don't forget it, the better you treat people, the happier you're gonna be. <laughs> Amen? John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, Jesus said, but I've chosen you. I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you. I love that. <laughs> In other words, wherever you're at is not an accident. God said, I've put you somewhere and I've put you there on purpose and I have planted you so that you would go and bear fruit. <laughs> Come on. You say, well, I don't like where I'm at. Well, <laughs> you don't have to like where you're at. You're there to bear fruit for God. If you get about doing what he put you there for, then maybe you'll get promoted out of there. If you keep complaining about where you're at, you might go somewhere worse. Amen? I always say complain and remain, praise and be raised. If you want to... What am I doing here? Well, if we're going to believe Scripture, God said, I have appointed you. I have placed you. I have planted you that you might go and bear fruit. That your Father in heaven might be honored and glorified, which we've already established is the reason why we're here. <laughs> to honor and glorify God. Now, the definition of fruit is that which is produced by the inherent energy of a living organism. So in other words, Whatever you see pop out on the outside, it's the result of something going on on the inside. And so, you know a tree is an orange tree because it has oranges. You know an apple tree is an apple tree because it has apples. So, you can know a Christian is a Christian if you see Christian fruit. But if all you hear is talk, and an attitude that you're better than everybody else or a judgmental attitude toward everybody that's not as good as you are. Amen. You know, there's so many in the people and there's so many people in the world that are hurting so bad. And a lot of times as Christians, we get so used to being with each other and all being so spiritual together that we get out and we run into somebody that's just like, whoa. And the first thing we're tempted to do is kind of just like withdraw and isolate. And I remember I was with a, a pastor from England and my husband and somebody else. And, and this guy from England's quite a character and he's really great with people. And um, we went into Starbucks and the girl that waited on us was well, her hair was probably five different colors and it was all going in 40 different directions and she had piercings all over the place. Well, you know, I could, I could feel my religious attitudes. Come on. Do, do you ever feel your little religious thing coming up there? It's like, 
right away you're sure that, well, well, this guy from England, he leans right over the counter and says, man, I love your hair. How do you do that? And he struck up this conversation with her and they were just, you know, enjoying talking and I, we, we've, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta get rid of the religious facade. Amen. I tell this story sometimes, but I retell whatever pops in my heart. I was out shopping with uh, another female minister, and she's an evangelist, and I'm a teacher. And uh, we went in a store, and the girl said, what are you in town for? And we said, oh, we're here to do a, we're Christians, we're here to do a conference. And she said, oh, I'm spiritual. And I always kind of get, mm, When you tell somebody you're a Christian and they tell you they're spiritual, <laughs> you usually got to kind of find out first what kind of spiritual they're talking about. <laughs> and um, so we got into a little bit of a conversation and she ripped off a couple of cuss words that are pretty, pretty bad ones. And uh, she said, oh, I'm sorry. But she said, you know what? She said, I think God cusses. <laughs> well. I'm like, I got my back up now. I'm going to take up for God. I leaned over the counter and I said, God does not cuss. And my evangelist friend slipped right in front of me and said, but he loves people who do. <laughs> and see, here's what I was trying to do, and a lot of religious people do this. We had not even caught the fish yet, and I was trying to clean it. <laughs> you understand that? So, you can have an attitude about people you work with and judge all the wrong things they're doing all you want to, but it would be much better if you do what Jesus does, which is he meets people where they're at. Come on now. He meets people where they're at, and then by loving them, he helps them get to where they need to be. Fruit is the visible expression of something that's working inside of us invisibly. So, the way that people can tell that God is working in our life is by how we change. Now, it takes time. We don't get it all fixed up all at once. We'll be growing as long as we have a human body. We'll be, that's why we, we, we can never stop learning. We always have to be educating and re-educating and rehearing some of the same things over and over and over again. So Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think according to his power that works in us. Now, if we just will stop trying to keep Jesus just for ourselves and turn him into our own little private supply cabinet, <laughs> give him our list of 20 things we have to have today to stay saved, well, God, if you don't do it, if I don't get a breakthrough today, God, I just don't know if I can hang on. I just, I don't know if I can hold on. My air conditioner's broke and the guy can't get here for three days, God, I'm depressed. <laughs> but the things that God, you have no idea what God wants to do through you. The amazing things. Well, I want to remind you again that the Bible never says that we are to be busy. It says that we are to be fruitful.
un unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa, in this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of, as well, uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area, we were, we were scared for the kids. It's heartbreaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes, they did. What we do you... never found them. Before we open up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice-to-haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long-term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our Classrooms of Hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives. Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu hoe je Gods stem kunt horen telefonisch op 026... 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse verfrissing? Frisse Impulsen levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan.